Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My updated graphics and performance video coming up next on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Today's video will be a revised or an update to my Sim Update 11 graphics and performance video. We will also incorporate updates to the Ultimate VR Guide as well. If you have not seen either of these two videos, I highly recommend for you to go watch these first and then come back to this one. All the links will be down in the description. In this video, we will be going over some updates for the RTX 4000 series, as well as some updates to the NVIDIA control panel, and we'll talk about some of the Microsoft Flight Sim graphics and performance settings in there. If you have any comments or questions along the way, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Before we get started in today's video, I just have one disclaimer. All the settings that I'm going to go over today are my personal settings, and they may or may not work for you. I would recommend to use these as a baseline to start your testing, and then tweak the settings until you get the proper performance and graphics that you're looking for on your system. Everyone's system is different, even if you're using the exact same components, they are made up of different materials. Okay, the first thing I would like to address is the RTX 4000 series. Now, one of the major benefits of the RTX 4000 series is the ability to use DLSS 3. So now let's get into how to activate it. And there's one setting inside of Windows that we need to turn on first. Head down to the search bar, type in graphics. Then we're going to tap on graphics settings here above. Once this opens, we need to turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This setting is mandatory so that we're able to activate DLSS 3 inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now this also has some negative effects on non-RTX 4000 series cards. So if you have a RTX 3000 series or below, having hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on can and may cause some stutters inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Next up on the list is the NVIDIA control panel. We're gonna start at the top of the tree on the left and work our way down. So let's start with the adjust image settings with preview. On this menu, you wanna make sure that you tick the use advanced 3D image settings. This will allow us to customize and manage all of our 3D settings. Now that leads us into the next menu, the Manage 3D Settings over here on the left. In this menu, we have two tabs at the top. We either have global settings or we can set individual specific program settings. Now, I do recommend that we set up individual program settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator as we're gonna bump up a lot of the settings here and you don't want your PC running at a higher rate when we're not using the sim. But first, there's two things that we need to do in the global settings menu. The first thing is all the way at the bottom, we wanna make sure that we hit the restore button to restore all of these settings to factory default. Once we're done with that, the other setting that we need to adjust here is the shader cache size. You wanna scroll all the way down till you see shader cache size. We're gonna click on the drop down and we wanna change this to either 10 gigabytes or you can change it to unlimited and that depends on the space that you have available. Before we head over to the program settings, there's one more thing that I would like to go over relating to the shader cache. Now this is going to greatly reduce the amount of stutters that you may experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that is to remove or clear out all of the NVIDIA shader cache files. If you're unsure of how to delete your shader cache, I've done a video on this in the past. I'll post the link down below in the description or you can click up here. All right, so now let's move over to the program settings at the top. Here's where we're gonna select Microsoft Flight Simulator so that we can adjust all of the settings specific for this application. To do that, we're gonna click on the dropdown, find Microsoft Flight Sim, and we're ready to go. Now, if you're unable to find Microsoft Flight Simulator, here's what we would wanna do. Click on the box here that says show only programs found on your PC. Then we're gonna come over and click on the add button. Now, if you have just used Microsoft Flight Simulator, oh, you're in luck because it will show you all the recently used first. 
So we can click on Microsoft Flight Simulator, add selected program, and then you should be able to find it in your dropdown. So now let's move to the options that we have here below. First on the list is the NVIDIA Image Scaling or the NIS tool. This is a driver-based feature that takes the in-game image from a lower resolution, then upscale it to the native resolution using a scaling algorithm and sharpening, making the output image look like it was rendered at native resolution. I have tried this setting on my PC, and personally, it didn't give me any FPS increase. But that's not to say if you have a lower to mid-range PC that this wouldn't give you a significant FPS boost. If you are going to try out the image scaling, I would recommend to use it in the global settings. This will iron out any hiccups that could arise by using it in a specific program. So let's go over real quick on how to use the NVIDIA image scaling. So the first thing you're going to do is tap on the drop down and then click on GPU scaling. Below that we have the sharpening factor. Anywhere between 30 to 50% should be good, so we'll just set it at 32. Below that you want to make sure that you have the overlay indicator checked and then we can hit OK. Now we'll hit apply. So now that we have the image scaling on, we need to adjust the scaling factor. To do that, we can come over to change resolution. Once we're in the resolution tab, you can see at the very top, we have several different scaling options that we can choose. Now they may not all look great on your screen, so I just recommend to check those out one by one. So that's a crash course on how to use the NIS scaling tool. Oh yes, there is one more thing. When you do switch the NIS scaling tool off, you may be left with something like you see on my screen here. So what we need to do now is to just go back to the resolution and then you're going to scroll down until you see the native resolution for your PC and then we can hit apply and save. All right, so now we're back into program settings. The next one up on the list is anisotropic filtering. This we're going to turn on 16x, and what this is going to do is override Microsoft Flight Simulator anisotropic filtering. So on the NSIM graphics settings, you could just turn that off. Now you may ask, well, why would you want to do that here in the panel? Well, that's because when you set it in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it doesn't actually give us 16 times anisotropic filtering. Next one down is anti-aliasing FXAA. We're going to keep that off anti-aliasing gamma correction you want to make sure that's on and that's going to really enhance some of the colors inside of the sim for you below that is the anti-aliasing mode we have that in application controlled anti-aliasing transparency off background application max frame rate off CUDA GPUs we're going to select that to all and select your GPU here and hit OK low latency mode I have set to off now since the introduction of the NVIDIA Reflex technology. So let me explain a little bit about both of these. In the NVIDIA control panel, the low latency mode is a driver-based low latency mode. The NVIDIA Reflex technology that you have on the in-sim graphics now is a software-based low latency mode. The NVIDIA Reflex technology will always override whatever you have inside of the NVIDIA control panel. So that's why I just keep it off now, and then I can just turn on the reflex if I want it inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Below that, for max frame rate, we have that set to off. OpenGL GDI compatibility, we have this set for prefer performance. OpenGL rendering GPU, make sure this is set to auto select. Power management mode, I have this set to prefer max performance. Now, if you are someone who prefers to use the normal power setting mode, it's very important that if you're using the NVIDIA Reflex technology in the graphics settings in Microsoft Flight Sim, that you're not using the boost feature. If you use the NVIDIA Reflex on and boost, that will override your power management mode into prefer maximum performance. So that's just a little FYI there for you. Below that is preferred refresh rate. I have this set to application controlled. You could also set it to highest available, but I'll leave it there. Texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization. I keep this set to off. If you have a lower to mid-range PC and you want to get a little bit more performance out of it, turning this on will boost your performance slightly. But you may have the negative effect of shimmering or glistening objects, especially in the distance. 
Below that is the texture filtering negative LOD bias. I have this set on clamp. Now what this will help us do is reduce the pixelization on static objects when we are going past them. So for instance, clouds, while we are flying past them and they are staying static, this will help reduce the pixelization in the clouds. Now I did say reduce and not eliminate, so please keep that in mind. Below that we have texture filtering quality, and I have mine just set on quality. I've tried performance and high performance. It really doesn't do anything. I did not gain any FPS, but if you use a different setting, please let me know your results down below in the comments. Now one thing I did notice here, if you do change this setting, make sure that you go back and check your other texture filtering options that they haven't been switched on you. Because that's one thing that this will do is change the texture filtering options to accommodate the setting that you choose. Below that, we have texture filtering trilinear optimization. We have that on. Threaded optimization, we have that on. Triple buffering, make sure you have that off. Vertical sync, I have set to use the 3D application setting. Now this can be very different depending on your system. The purpose of vertical sync is to help with screen tearing. Now, don't get that confused with stuttering. What screen tearing is, is where the upper half of the screen separates from the lower half of the screen when you're turning around inside the cockpit. The only downside to using vertical sync is that it will induce slight latency. Now, there are a couple ways in which you can help mitigate screen tearing without using vertical sync. So I'll get into those in just a second. Below that, we have virtual reality pre-rendered frames. I have mine set to one. Now, if you have a higher end system with a very fast CPU, then you may benefit from using two or three frames. And what this is going to do is pre-render the frames with your CPU before they are sent to your GPU for processing. Now that can help eliminate some micro stutters and things like that. In turn, it does put a higher load on your CPU. So if you have a lower to mid-range system and you're using VR, I do not recommend to use anything other than one for the pre-rendered frames. At the very bottom, we have the Vulkan OpenGL present method, and this we have set to auto. Once we're done with that, make sure that you hit apply and save at the bottom. And now let me talk about the screen tearing issue again. The first thing we need to do to help mitigate any screen tearing without the use of vertical sync is to make sure that we have our display set to our native resolution and the native refresh rate of our monitor. So to do that, we're gonna head over to display change resolution. Down below here, you'll see a scroll wheel. You just wanna scroll all the way down until you see the native resolution for your monitor. The next thing we need to do is to set the native refresh rate. Now, if you're unsure of the native refresh rate for your monitor, just click on the resolution one more time and your native refresh rate should pop in. Once that's done, we can hit apply. Below the resolution, I do recommend that you use the NVIDIA color settings. So you can just click on the drop downs and choose the highest that are available. Dynamic range, make sure you have set the full and then hit apply and save. The next setting we're gonna take a look at is in the adjust desktop color settings. Now this is not gonna adjust performance, but it is gonna adjust your graphics. The only setting that I recommend to change here is the digital vibrance. We're gonna take that from 50 to anywhere between 60 and 70%. Hit apply and save, and that will just make your colors pop just that much more once you're in the sim. The last thing we're gonna go over today is resizable bar. So what is resizable bar? This is a mechanism that allows the PCIe device such as a graphics card to negotiate the bar size to optimize system resources. Enabling this function can result in a performance improvement. And in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I found about a 5% FPS improvement when I enabled resizable bar. Now keep in mind to be able to use resizable bar, you need a 3000 series graphics card as well as a compatible motherboard. Now I'm not gonna go through a full tutorial on how to turn on resizable bar, but if you would like to have some more information on that, I've done a video and I will post links down in the description. So be sure to check that out. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's content. 
If you'd like to help out the channel further, go down below and tap on the thanks icon. Your support is greatly appreciated. All right, so now let's go over all of my settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but make sure you stay to the end because there's some other settings in the traffic menu that can greatly improve your performance. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is how to turn on your FPS counter, because I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions there. To activate this FPS counter in the top right, you're gonna go down to the Developers tab, turn on Developer Mode, and then go up to the Debug tab at the top. Go down to Display FPS, and there you go. Now I'm not gonna be going over every one of my settings, so if you need to pause the video, please do so. What I will go over is some of the heavy hitters and some recommended settings there. So the first thing that I would like to address are the RTX 4000 series graphics cards, DLSS3. To be able to use that or activate that in Microsoft Flight Simulator now, you need to be running DirectX version 12. So you would come down here, turn on DX12, apply and save, and then restart the simulator. Once a sim has restarted, you should now have an option to turn on DLSS frame generation. The first setting that I would like to go over is VSync. Now, as you can see, I have it set off in the simulator as I no longer need that after changing my native refresh rate as well as the native resolution in the NVIDIA control panel. Now, if you've tried to change your monitor's native resolution as well as the native refresh rate, and you just cannot get rid of the screen tearing when you're moving your head side to side, I would like to go over some VSync settings that may help mitigate that issue for you. Now again, the first thing that we're gonna do is to make sure in the NVIDIA control panel that we are using the 3D application setting first. Then we're gonna come into Microsoft Flight Sim, turn VSync on, and then we can leave this at the 100% monitor refresh rate. Now if that doesn't take care of your screen tearing, then we want to go with option number two. So we're going to turn off VSync in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now for this, you are going to have to exit Microsoft Flight Sim to make the setting changes in the control panel. Inside the NVIDIA control panel now, instead of using 3D application setting, we're going to use the fast setting at the bottom. Now what that's going to do is it will allow the GPU to render unconstrained, similar to VSync off. So it's not going to put an FPS cap on your VSync. Now, if that doesn't work in helping you with your screen tearing, then I'm out of options. <laughs> so hopefully one of these options will work for you. Um, the only other thing that you could try is to reduce your monitor's refresh rate down to 60 and then try the various VSync options again. But I think one of these will work out for you. Next is the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. For monitor users, I highly recommend to turn this on. Now there is one caveat to using the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency mode, and that is to users who are CPU bound. Since NVIDIA Reflex is about eliminating back pressure from GPU bound scenarios, it should have no effect when you are CPU bound in a game, and it could also induce some stutters inside of your system as well. So this is one of those settings that you are gonna to need to test based on your system specs. One of the biggest hard hitting settings here is the terrain level of detail. This is greatly gonna impact your CPU usage. So let's take a look at the FPS counter real quick. You'll notice here that I am limited by GPU. If you notice that your system says limited by CPU, then turning down the level of detail on your terrain can help mitigate that limitation. But keep in mind that you will always be limited by something. Just like you see here, my PC and your PC cannot run to infinity. There's always going to be something that's going to limit your FPS. So just keep that in the back of your head when you're trying to adjust some of these settings. Below that is the off-screen terrain pre-caching. And for this one, I do also recommend to keep on Ultra. What this will do is it will pre-cache all of your surroundings once you spawn into the sim. So this way, when you look left and you look right, it already has those images pre-cached so it can just display them on your monitor or your VR set. When you turn this down to anything other than Ultra, then when you turn from side to side, it has to either re-download that information and process it, and then that will give you an FPS spike 
into the negative. The next setting on the list is going to be volumetric clouds. This can also greatly impact your performance as well. By having this on ultra, this is going to be a big strain on your system. Texture resolution isn't one that really impacts your FPS or performance so much, at least on my system. Below that we have anisotropic filtering. Again, I have this off because in the NVIDIA control panel, we have this set to 16x. The next one we're going to talk about that can help with performance is ambient occlusion. So if you're needing just a couple extra FPS to help smooth out your gameplay, turning down the ambient occlusion can help you achieve that. Below that, I have most all of the other settings turned off and cockpit refresh rate is on medium. I'm not going to go over all of these settings individually. All of the same hard hitting settings that I went over in PC are going to make the same difference here in VR. So if you need to pause the video, please do so. The first setting that I do want to talk about is the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. Now I told you for VR that I do recommend to have this off because I've noticed some slight micro stutters when I have this on. If you want to turn the Reflex Low Latency mode on in VR, don't do it here. Go to your PC and turn on the Reflex Low Latency there. Once you spawn into VR, you'll notice that this setting here will now be automatically turned on. The other setting that I wanted to go over that I brushed over in PC is the texture resolution. Now keep in mind that anytime that you change your texture resolution and hit apply and save, you get a pop-up that's going to say you need to restart your flight sim before the settings can take effect. So what does that mean for you? In PC mode, if you're using ultra texture resolution and you're using high, medium, or low in VR, when you switch into VR, you're still going to be using the texture resolution that was in PC. And the reason for that is because you need to restart your system for the settings to take effect. So whatever you set your texture resolution in PC, make sure that you have the same set in VR. All the rest of the settings here I have dummy down just a little bit, just to give me a little bit more performance. Now these settings that I'm using for VR, I use with the Reverb G2, and the Vario Aero, I do not change any of these settings. If you would like to know my OpenXR Toolkit settings, please go down in the description and check out the Ultimate VR Guide. I go over all of that in that video. All right, so now that we have gone over all the graphics settings, I did tell you at the beginning of this segment that there was one more menu that can greatly improve your performance, and that's down in the Traffic menu. In the traffic menu, we have a bunch of different sliders down here that we can adjust. Now, if you've never messed with this, you probably have all of yours either at 50% or 100%. What I recommend to do is to turn all of them down to about 10%. Now, this is going to greatly improve the performance when you are approaching an airport and departing an airport. So it will help eliminate a lot of stutters in your system. Again, it's not going to remove them, but it can help reduce them. The only one that I have off is the ground air traffic density, and that's because when I use FSLTL or any other live traffic, that you don't want planes spawning on top of other planes. So that's why I keep that one off. The other option here that can help with performance is turning the nameplates off. Now make sure that when you are adjusting any of these settings, that you do adjust them for PC and VR. All right, everyone, that's going to finish us up for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back to you. If the video helped you out, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.